Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to our third, no, fourth installment, chapter three, fourth video on Invisible Man. So this chapter, chapter three, chapter three is really important for a few reasons, but the main, main thing for chapter three, everybody, is that you are going to meet a character who is named the Vet. The Vet is a character who's a little bit prophetic. He sort of says things that may appear to be sort of crazy and appear to have like no basis in reality. But then when you really look at what he says and you really think about what he says, it has a whole lot of meaning to it. The Vet in this chapter in particular is one that when I read it as someone who's read this book multiple times, every time I read it, I see something kind of layered in the Vet's language. So you might want to come back to this chapter a few more times as you keep reading through to keep understanding exactly what the Vet is saying. Because for the Invisible Man, a lot of the Vet's words go completely over his head. He really doesn't understand what the Vet is saying to him. And part of the process that the Invisible Man's going to go through is figuring out what it is exactly that the Vet says to him. The Golden Day, everyone, the space where they're at, the Golden Day, is a little bit of a strange place. It's a bar, it's also a bit of a brothel, and it's run by African Americans. So there's this sense of um, African Americans being in charge, African Americans being in power, and the way that the vet and others treat Mr. Norton as a white man really sort of shocks the Invisible Man and really sort of kind of throws him for a little bit of a loop. You may want to think about why that's important and why the Invisible Man is so shocked by that. Maybe what that says if we think about, you know, where the Invisible Man sees himself in this society and where, what side of the society he's trying to put himself on. That might be something important to think about from chapter one, chapter two, and now in chapter three. There are a lot of names in chapter three. There's a lot of minor characters in chapter three, and there's a lot of names that are referenced. You may find it helpful to research some of these names because some of the names are historical allusions. The name of Hallie, for example, you have a lot of names referenced in American history like Ford, Jefferson. Uh, you've got names like John D. Rockefeller. So there's a lot of names I keep coming through this, all right? Researching those names and sort of seeing what those names are and why they're maybe referenced could be important and could be significant in your reading. There's another name, everyone, um, Supercargo. Supercargo is a weird name. You're gonna be like, what the heck is that guy's name, Supercargo? I want you to think about slavery. I want you to think about the idea of slavery, the idea of people as cargo. And again, there's a lot of references and there's a lot of layers going on through this chapter. You also have a really important scene of violence and an important scene of madness through this chapter. So you might wanna look at what happens to sort of cause that fight and why that fight, how that fight sort of gets resolved. At the end of it, Mr. Norton, the Invisible Man, will leave and go back to the school and head away. It's a crazy chapter. There's a lot of wildness in this chapter. And again, paying attention to the impact of this chapter on the Invisible Man is really, really important here. I hope that you enjoy it. It's a weird book, but it starts to make sense and get a little bit more normal the more that we proceed through it. Of course, track those references, track those annotations. Let me know any thoughts as we keep working through this text.